Okay, so uh, I've been playing around with some gears, um, making some gears and stuff, and um, and temperatures. I'm just learning my machine here, and uh, well, laser cutting gears is with this laser draw is probably not the best option because you got to go through some multiple steps um, laser draw does not import DXF files so you have to use Corel draw and then export them uh, but then the problem is laser draw doesn't know how to interpret the EMF files so then you got to go back and scale and change the scale because when they import them it just imports them to the size of your your layout um, the also problem is you cannot have Corel laser and laser draw open at the same time. It is virtually the same program and they are t they work totally different. Um, I ran the one under Corel laser and it ran a lot slower and it I said to do the inside first and it didn't so that's why you actually see this gear with no holes in it and even though I said inside first. Um, so very disappointed with Corel laser. I like laser draw, but it just it's not as, it doesn't support as much. So um, so it's a multi-step. So I'm going to kind of go show you exactly what what I'm doing here. So here's a um, the gear template generator um, that I got got offline, uh, and then you, you you play around and I'm I'm going to make this a bit smaller because I'm going to try to put two pieces on one piece of wood here. Um, so I'm going to make these down to well. 40 millimeters should, I think, let me double check and see if I've got enough room. Yeah, I could keep up probably 40, 45. Um, so I'll do 45. Um, now the one thing with this gear generator is, so I can't quite get 45 exactly, um, right here, I don't know if you can see this, probably not. Um, that looks backwards on there. Um, right here, it's 4507. This is the overall outer diameter, and this is the pitch diameter. And I, I have that turned off, but if I turn it on, pitch diameter is in the middle here. But when you export with this program, you got to have everything shut off. So um, I'm going to change it, maybe change the spokes so just to make it look a little different. I have this set to, I believe, 5 millimeter shaft opening. And here you can set the teeth. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go up maybe, see as soon as you add more teeth it actually makes it bigger I believe. So I'm going to go to 20 teeth and then I'm going to see if I can reduce the pitch diameter. No, so you've got to set the teeth first. Um, I'm just kind of learning this program as well. So. Uh, 44.99, that's pretty darn close. Uh, with five opening, okay. Uh, this other stuff you can set the angle. Like if you turn here, line of contact, this is where the pins would hit. Um, and there was a, another one that you can, you could actually turn the animate. So if you had two gears on, you can do this and it shows the point of contact. Um, and then you can set separate parameters for this gear. And, and then you could actually unmesh them so that when you export in DXF they're not actually touching so uh, but I'm only gonna do one gear and I'm gonna undo the mesh and I'm gonna unanimate it and then un this okay um, so anyway so I got a 22 teeth gear um, pretty close to the the uh, diameter I want so now we're gonna go export as a basic DXF and I've been just naming my weird stuff so I'm going to name this 20 20 tooth um, and 45 diameter okay just so I know when I when I do that so now I'm done with this program so now I gotta open up um, Corel laser and Corel laser I'll import it and it, it imports it quite well um, so if I go into file import and I do the 2245 okay and so I import this 
and then I did the metric gun. I don't know if it makes a difference automatic, but I select because I know it's one unit is one millimeter. Um, and this top projection, I really don't know much about it, but I want it. I don't want it 3D, so I want it straight from the top. So because it's it's only uh, flat drawing anyway. So then you can select where you want it. So we'll put it up here, and there's your gear. So the important thing to know here. So we got to save this first. So I'm going to go file save as, and uh, sorry, sorry, not save as. We want to export it. Sorry, file export this as an EMF file. Okay, so I'm going to export this. This is the same name, 20, 20 tooth, and 45 diameter. Okay, um, export. Okay, and then I'm done. I can close this. So I and I have to close it. See, here's your here's your specifications up here for engraving, and and, and see it's moving and stuff. And I'll, I'll reset this up. But um, if if I if I went to the cut, and it changed the speed, and and in, I went inside first. I'm not sure what this nearest does. But anyway, I ran it this way, and it just didn't seem to work. Okay. Um, but one of the key things you have to do with this is is um, well not in this one but when, when we use the other draw so what I'm gonna do here now that it's export I'm gonna go in here and save this now if, make sure that you know these numbers and make sure that they're the same if they're not the same say your drawing is isn't perfectly round you'll have to keep both of those numbers as a scale so I'm gonna go uh, copy this Okay, I guess I can't. Uh, I'll have to do the control C just so you guys can see, but it's 44844. Okay, so I'm going to close this. I'm not going to save it. Um, and now I'm going to open up Laser Draw. And with Laser Draw, I'm going to open. You don't have to import it, you just have to open it. And it's all supported files. So there's my 20 tooth, and it's an EMF file. That's one. Now, but see how it opened, and my my grid is set at 40 millimeters, and that's the size it made it. And obviously, it's not the size I wanted. So I'm going to go under my laser layout here, and I'm going I'm just going to change this to 60, and 60, and then that will change because I have a, a two millimeter uh, workspace here. Click OK, and now what I'm going to do is highlight this, and I know it's really hard to see this. Um, but over here under the width and height that says it's 40, this is where I need to put in those numbers that I got from Corel Laser. And it made it a little bit bigger, so now my scale is correct. Okay. Now one of the things I I'm, don't really like with this, and I don't know how, i, I got to play with it more. When I hit the cut button, it's really light and it's really, really hard to see. Um, so... Now I can kind of barely see it here, and I'm going to play with that. Now I'm going to test to make sure that it's 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 uh, where I want. See, and, and on this one, the the, tr the nearest is turned on, so I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do some research on that. Um, but I'm going to do a quick test to make sure that it's it's uh, yeah it's lined up where I want it. Okay, so I'm going to actually pull this off, handheld this, and I'm going to kind of go show you. Whoops, show you what I'm doing here. Okay, so we can watch it being cut here, and I'm going to just widen out here a little bit. I know the focus isn't great, so um, I guess I can go over here and show you. So what I'm doing here is, is going to just, by looking at the speed, the speed here is set preset, so I'm going to kind of leave it, it's been cutting not bad, um, and I, I got to learn that, and, um, and I'm going to play with adding the task, because apparently you can do multiple programs. Um, at one time, so you can engrave and then cut. I, I got to learn all that too. Um, but anyway, I'm going to hit the start button. Once I do, um, I'm going to make sure see the the laser switch is on, and my power is about 50 50 percent. So when when it goes up, it actually hits about 10 amps or 10 milliamps, um, which seems to be um, seems to be pretty good. So I'm going to hit the go button here. 
and hopefully it'll cut through. If not, I'll have to cut it. And I don't know why it's doing that. I'm now gonna move. Oops, the photo focus. I'm gonna move over here and try to cut a second over here. Um, so again, what I need to do is hit the button here, uh, and then I'm just gonna grab the part here, and I can see it ends right about here. So if I know if I move it about to here, I should be beyond it. And one way to test is to hit the laser button. Um, and that, and boy, when I hit it, it jumps now. It's hitting 20. So, so I'm gonna give that a go. But I think I'm gonna go over just a smidge. So you can actually hold the, uh, use these arrow keys, and it'll actually move very, very slightly. In here. And so if I hit the test switch again, see that's how much it moved. Okay, so I, I think that went through that time. I'm hoping. Um, so I'm, I'm at 20. So I'm going to hit the start, and let's let's hope this actually will uh, cut all the way through the button. And then I'm going to I'm going to see me. Whoops! I just said this. It's actually going through. Um, it's nice and tight, which, which I'm actually pretty happy with. So, um, so I'm going to turn around and, and pull the ball. There's the one gear. There's the other gear. So, so there's the two gears. And. Um, not quite so it needs to be a touch touch more but I look at those and those and, you know I, I can go like this I don't know if you can see how I crossed them like that just so that you can and then if you can feel the teeth I can make sure that those teeth are exactly the same um, hold on, hold on this is exactly the same in diameter which it's hard to do with one hand. Okay, uh, but I can feel it, and and there, and that so that's rotated. Um, you know, I don't know why. Well, I, I don't know what's rotated from there, but it's rotated at least probably forty-five degrees, um, or thirty degrees anyway. Uh, just just to show the accuracy of the teeth and I don't know if we can really see in here um, but I think they're going to mesh good now the gears I want to make are obviously going to be bigger than these but um, I want to be about six inches in diameter um, so what I'm going to need to do is, is take this this thing is pretty useless um, the small stuff it's actually kind of neat um, but you know any it only opens up three three and three quarters of an inch or three and a half inches and you know if you're not if you're making anything bigger than that you, where you can do I don't really want to burn this up too much people are setting stuff right on here and, uh, and cutting and I, I don't want to do that so I'm actually going to remove these there's five screws in here um, take them out and I'm just going to go get myself uh, some expanded mesh uh, and replace this and, and and I found some stuff in Thingiverse that I can print, 3D print, uh, some different holders and s s stuff. So yeah. Anyway, uh, that's that's my process of of converting a DXF file into 
Laser Strike. 